was watching the show with Beth this morning about this article about the frustration that Ten Hag might have with regards to whether they're going to back him in the summer. There's reports that he might be in his final months. There are still people out there criticising him as a manager and I bet they can't wait with their knife and fork waiting to slag him off on the, uh, next Sunday if we lose to Aston Villa. But I think this needs to stop. I think we need to park this. I think that Eric Ten Hag, after the press conference yesterday, did say to the journalists that I said we were going to improve once we got key players back. No one believed me. I said we'd be a better team when they were back. We'd have more balance. The forward would have a more balance. The team becomes better balanced. A consistent team equals more balance. It'll better performance. And... I don't think people wanted to listen to him about that, to be honest. My opinion is I don't think people wanted to listen to that. I'll even be honest, I think at times I didn't want to listen to it, but I knew we had to do it. I knew we had to wait until Casemiro, Martinez and Shaw were back. And it might only be a glimpse because Martinez is out now, but he's absolutely correct. He's been proven absolutely spot on. Rasmus, Ganacho, and um, uh, and uh, Menu have been better in the last two games because they've been able to express themselves in a more balanced side with Casemiro there, with Martinez there, with Luke Shaw there. Rashford settled down more, having Luke Shaw on, and Martinez on that side. Bruno settled down more as well. The team is better with those players back. And as we saw after 60 minutes against Wolves, as you start to take Casemiro off, as you start to take Rasmus off, as you start to take those players off, the team drops down to what it was before Christmas, which is an imbalanced team that with not enough players that want that can play the way Ten Hag wants to. And he has been proven right and he has silenced his critics. The problem is if those injuries come back and they already have done very quickly with Martinez, then we may start to see a drop in performance because Manchester United, with the team we started with on Thursday, or even yesterday, we can compete. We can compete. I think we can beat Arsenal at Old Trafford with the team we had out on Thursday. I think we could challenge Liverpool at Old Trafford with the team we had out on Thursday. But you take Martinez out, I don't necessarily think we can. You take Casemiro out, I definitely don't think we can. You take Luke Shaw out as well, I really don't think we can. And that's the fragility of this team. And I think that's what Ten Hag has been saying, that... The, 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 the depth of squad was never going to be solved in 18 months. And yet some of our fans and a lot of the media think that Ten Hag should be challenging with Liverpool and Arsenal and Man City now after 18 months because he overachieved in season one and has struggled this season with, let's be honest, a few signings that are not actually hitting the ground running for various uh, reasons. I mean, Mount's been injured for most of it and Arna's struggling to settle. And a squad that still needs a lot of work on it. So I think Ten Hag has been justified to say, look, I said this would happen. And whatever happens between now and the end of the season, I think against Wolves and against West Ham, we've seen something that we could actually build with over the summer and into next season. And I would urge the club to, to take notice of that. Yes, I suspect we will have more defeats between now and the summer. But what a crying shame it would be to remove Eric Ten Hag when you look at what we have. I mean, Ganacho and Menu are both players that have been developed on his watch. Rasmus is a signing that he's brought in. Those three players, you saw the picture yesterday. How many other clubs in the Premier League can say they've got three young players like that that they can build a team around for the next five to ten years? And that's on Ten Hag's watch. I know people think that it was wrong to sack Mourinho, and I do in hindsight. I don't think many people think it was wrong to sack Oli or Van Gaal. Um, and we obviously made a mistake with Rangnick. But what a mistake it would be if we sacked Ten Hag in the summer and then look back at what we had with these three players and what's coming through and go, we might just have shut out one of the best managers that we've got for the next five years. I think there needs to be a balance to this because there are mitigating circumstances. And if you can't consider that or figure that out, I would say, well, look no further than Newcastle or Chelsea. Should Eddie Howe be sacked in the summer? Should Pochettino be sacked in the summer? I actually think both, neither neither of those managers should be sacked. And, and people would say, well, how can you not sack Chelsea's manager? Pochettino's had a billion pounds. They're in the bottom half of the table. Because I think balance again at Chelsea is a problem and, and a manager can't work with a, with, with a squad that doesn't fit the way they want to play. And I think Ten Hag's had this problem. I'm not naming names, but there was players that he wanted to sell in the summer that are still part of the squad now because he wasn't allowed to bring in Kim Min Jae because they messed that deal up. He didn't get the midfielder he wanted. He got Amrabat at the end of the window. He didn't get De Jong the previous season. He, he got Casemiro. Like, so I think there is more than enough reason to to, to, to think that this manager could be the right person. And also, if I was Ineos, who are you bringing in? Who are you bringing in to replace Ten Hag in the summer? 
And does Ten Hag not represent what you want in a manager at Manchester United? We were very entertaining against Wolves away on Thursday night. Are we not about youth development? And that youth development is not just about bringing young players in from the uh, from the from the youth setup. It's about signing young players. Wayne Rooney was a si was signed as a teenager. Ronaldo was signed as a teenager. Rasmus has been signed as a 20 year, 20 year old. So I, I think that it's not like Mourinho at the end where you look at that team and you go, Mourinho loves people like Matic and Fellaini. We actually are building something for the future. And I think that even the way that Ten Hag and the club have dealt with the Rashford situation, a, a week ago, I probably did the most... Not, I, don't know, I don't know what the word is because I wouldn't call you toxic. But I did a video saying, I think the club have dealt with this correctly. And most of you said they did, you didn't. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I told you so. But in hindsight, you have to concede that it has worked out quite well. The club got hold of the Rashford situation, said it had been dealt with, put him in the team for the Wolves and West Ham game, and we've just won two games. And the, 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 the positives of that performance might not be Rashford himself, although I don't think he did badly in either game, but the team is settled, it's playing together. How can you say they handled it badly when we've gone and took six points from two games and the storm has passed and the sunny days have come? So... Trust in a manager is really important. And I find myself trusting this manager more and more at the moment. There has been mistakes. You know, you look back to the Nottingham Forest game, taking Maynou off after the Villa game at half time and losing in the second half. There has been mistakes. Of course there has. But I really do feel that we will have more bad results between now and the end of the season. But I've seen enough already that we stick with Ten Hag in the summer. I don't know what you lot think. In fact, we should probably do a poll on that as well. Um, also, as well, remember... I, I was thinking, look, it's very easy to um, it's very easy to just follow the headlines and say Ten Hag said this and the media said that. But I also remember a few things that we've said on this community for quite a while. Let me just get this poll going. Should Ten Hag be manager next year? And look, throw some in because I'm sure you can think of some as well. But can you remember last probably... September, October, Sancho, I think, had just had his problem. Anthony had had his problem. Rashford wasn't playing particularly well. And Ganacho was on the bench a little bit, but was coming on and doing quite well. And I remember saying, and a lot of you said it as well, um, Ganacho was breakthrough last year. This year, you've got to put him in the team, not for one game, You've got to put him in the team and give him a run. And that was just the theory of, of, of our, our community. I specifically remember saying it. And pretty much since then, I think Ganacho's played 15, 16, 17, maybe 18 games in a row. And it's interesting how we can discuss that and say Ganacho needs to be given a run in the team. And you half expect it not to happen. And then it happens. Um, people were talking about Mainu when he was injured in the pre-season and saying he's got to be given a chance when he comes back. And lo and behold, he starts him, was it Everton away as the holding midfielder? So I think that there are things that when you look at it, of course, there's been mistakes by Ten Hag. I think we can all talk about the mistakes he's made. But I think he's also made a lot of positive things. And I think he's deserved this chance to show what he thinks can happen. And I'd argue with anybody, a team that's got Martinez, Luke Shaw and Casemiro in it, is going to be way better balanced than a team that doesn't. And look, I'm not here to criticise Johnny Evans or Victor Lindelof or Rafael Varane or Harry Maguire because I think all in their own way have done well this season. But it's not about doing well. It's about the word balance. It's about how we want to play. Can we play the way we want to play with a combination of Evans and Lindelof or Maguire and Varane? It's debatable. We certainly can't do it as well as we can with Martinez and Varane or Martinez and Maguire yesterday. And I think that is fundamental. I think the midfield has been imbalanced all season and games are won and lost in the midfield. Um, and look, Delo will have a go at left back. We haven't Regwalon wasn't good enough and Luke Shaw is, is fantastic. So look, I, I'm gutted about what's happened with Martinez, but I hope that there is more of a movement to stick with this manager now, regardless of what happens between now and the end of the season. And I don't mean if we go and lose five games in a row, because I think that will be 
him gone. But I think we can put up with maybe three or four losses as long as we win a lot of the other games and we finish around sixth or fifth or fourth if we get lucky, if we get really lucky. I don't think fourth is going to be easy. Um, Goldbridge, that's the end of the clip. I'm sure you enjoyed it. In fact, I bet that's the best clip you've ever watched. So there's no reason not to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you never miss a clip again. In fact, smash a like on the video because we all know only legends like videos and you are all legends. So please smash a like on the video and uh, we will see you again on the next one. Thank you very much for watching as always.